it's never really an easy decision for me like if i decided to let one thing go i've already thought about it for so long didn't want to see another stone fallout or another tarnishing i was just over it hey guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is amy in today's video i'm gonna share with you the luxury items that i have let go in the past year some of them are gonna be pretty surprising or shocking for <laughs> i'm sure a lot of you i know these videos can be pretty bipolar in a sense that a lot of people find these very helpful but others are <laughs> quite angry in any case this is how i've decided to manage my collection and it's the right thing to do for me obviously the first thing i did let go which you probably saw on the thumbnail is the super iconic heart bag oh i know that one still hurts but it also made sense when i first saw it on the runway i knew i had to have it i was was one of the lucky ones where my lovely essay at the time she was my essay for many 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 years before she left she wanted to get me this bag um, so it was very lovely of her to do that but I'm sure a lot of you also found out on YouTube that many people have been experiencing problems with that bag that played a role in my decision but a very minor role for me, the main reason why I let it go was that the bag was really, really fussy, actually. Everything had to be at a different angle than I'm used to with regular bags. And because the opening, you kind of have to like fly it open. It was just such a fussy bag to use. And I just didn't love the fact that I always get annoyed and that I felt like I had to baby it. So I let the hard bag go about a year ago now. Um, it's been that long. <laughs> it's one of the first ones that I've rehomed uh, in the past year. And with that one, I just consigned it with a fashion file. At the time, fashion file, at least I guess last year, the economy was still okay. So I still pretty much broke even. I think with the exchange rate, I lost a little bit, but it's just what it is. At the end of the day, it was just one of those things that I you know, I could just consider it never having gotten it, even though there were memories attached to it. The hard bag was one out of the 10 handbags that I let go in the past year. I know it sounds crazy because 10 is a big number considering that my collection is not so big. It's big enough for me. Aside from the handbags, I also let go of quite a bit of jewelry, mainly costume jewelry, which I'm also gonna share in this video. <laughs> Before I move on to the next bag, I want to share with you where this gorgeous blue dress came from so this next part of the video is in partnership with Fabrique this is the second time I'm working with Fabrique and like I mentioned the first time they pretty much collaborate with over 300 designers all around the world they just make absolutely gorgeous gorgeous ready to wear yes i call them ready to wear because these pieces are by designers that work for very very big fashion houses it really shows through the quality of their clothing as well as all the detailings uh, this wool coat as you can tell from the gorgeous fabric is super plush it has this really english vibe irish vibe uh, Scottish wool weaving it features this collar fastening so you can cover your neck and make it look super cool. The sleeves are oversized signature thread here, the red thread from all the fabric line and this really big statement slit down the middle at the back of the coat. Designed by Joshua Lockwood. He used to work for Burberry, Saint Laurent, and Givenchy. He's a Kingston grad and he also specializes in jackets with modern cuts. And you can really tell because when I styled this jacket, it really gave me Burberry vibes. It's just a gorgeous winter coat really heavyweight wool super warm so these are called the liberty color block patch jeans in cotton denim by the way guys these jeans are on black friday sale until november 16th these pants are more wide leg this is the seam on the bottom what i also love about the color blocking is that if you have any bags that are in this kind of natural or brown color or the Hermes gold and it really pairs so well with. These jeans are designed by Roderick Wong and he's super talented. Here it says he's a star creation champion, Audi Young Designer Award winner, former FJ Benjamin talent. He's also featured in Vogue, Elle, and Harper's Bazaar. Venus Silk Wool Blend 
sweater this top has a super fun neckline check out the links below this top is also on black friday sale you can do a one shoulder look you can do a kind of like cowl neck like there's just so many ways to wear this i got it in size small and it's from the designer martina albacini she's from italy she designs for max mara she specializes in crafting symbols silhouettes and exquisite details i think that is why i was drawn to this piece because it had that very refreshing and yet so elegant a beautiful tweed with this silver thread going through it this is called the hortensia coat in wool blend tweed when i saw this coat which was part of their new releases i knew i had to have it first of all such chanel vibes because the buttons are stars so there's four buttons on the four pockets on this jacket. It's got this gorgeous sort of lapel. You can fasten the jacket with these hidden buttons, metal buttons. I'm sweating a little bit because these jackets are so warm. Even just holding them is making me hot. I cannot wait to go to special events and just show up in this gorgeous, very Chanel-esque coat it's just oh it's just beautiful this one is slightly lighter than the previous one um, also because it has more of an open v-neck collar by my favorite designer alex hotin he's the chanel haute couture star he also used to be an intern at kenzo at lagerfeld this is called the jessica dress in miruno wool it's a super clean look very minimal in a way it comes in two colors i got the blue one even though normally i don't get blue but this blue is just such a vibrant gorgeous blue that just goes so well with my cool tone skin tone i played with my chanel belt and a chanel bag and then i also changed it up with my mini kelly and a gold belt and both ways works so so well this dress is designed by canadian designer her name is anna pang founder of index series she also dresses priyanka chopra she's the ex assembly ny director and she's been featured in in style and fashion even though i don't really know her very well but her dress when i saw it and how it looks so gorgeous on the Asian model they were using, I knew immediately it would look good on me. And if blue is not your color, even though I honestly think you should get this blue color if you could, uh, they also have it in black. This is the Leona vegan skirt. Not only is this vegan leather super supple, like it's so soft, you wouldn't even know that you're not actually wearing lambskin. It's that soft. It's so forgiving because it's got this like nice, drapey panel right on the waistline so it covers a little bit of your butt and your tummy so it's super forgiving trust me guys you want to get this when i saw this it immediately reminded me of the latest Hermes collection because there was a lot of skirts long skirts and some leather ones this designer her name is victoria chan nominated for the gold napen featured in l sweden known for her architectural couture dressed the royal princess sophia of sweden and vanessa lindbold i've actually become such a big fan of hers as well that I know every time I look at Fabrique, I can just go and check out her works. This one, I don't know if you guys remember, does it look familiar? I already have the black version of this from my last haul. I love this designer so much that I knew I became a big fan and I had to get more things from this same designer. And the fact that he now made this same jacket that I love in this kind of creamy white color is fantastic. So it's got a little bit of sequence on it, but it's a super soft sequence. It doesn't even scratch or anything. Very, very beautiful. Kind of reminds me of the new runway collection that they have right now. The one with the bird feathers, it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Has that vibe. Gorgeous a three button closure, very discreet. And of course it's fully lined. The material on the black one is definitely heavier. So this is more fall. This is more for spring. Um, but yeah, they are the same cut, really gorgeous. And this has a three button closure, but the buttons are slightly different. This one has a pearl detail on it. They're both gorgeous and I highly recommend both. I mean it when I say run, don't walk run and get this piece because not only is it a special limited edition so it's 
super super limited this is by the same designer victoria chan this is the freya tweed jacket and i highly 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 recommend that you also get their matching skirt oh the two are just so beautiful and it really just reminds me of some of the haute couture chanel on the runways especially during the fall time a very modern slightly oversized fit so it is a little boxier a little longer four beautiful pockets silver metal buttons throughout the jacket you will see the extra satin piece or silky material that peeks out that's also on the sleeve. It's so flattering, guys. It's just drop-dead gorgeous in a very modern way. And especially when you pair it with the matching skirt. So the matching skirt is gorgeous. It's got the length. It's got the one slit in the back. And of course, the bottom satin trim also. The skirt alone is so gorgeous. It's so form-fitting. I got this in extra small as well as the jacket because they're oversized and it's just gorgeous look at the lining so don't say i didn't tell you so run and get this piece okay it's so so beautiful and at these prices that's the other thing about fabrique they collaborate with these high-end designers but they are able to keep the prices low the quality and the design on their pieces is spectacular as usual i'm gonna have every single piece i featured linked down below along with the sizing and just an fyi i know a lot of you reached out and said that oh my gosh i couldn't check out because they only ship to the us and the reason is because fabric is slowly expanding outside of the us but it's taking some time if you are outside of the us and you want to buy these clothes just reach out to them by email mention my coupon code they will do their best to work out uh, the shipping process and everything with you so uh, that is the little bit of inconvenience I know to everybody else who is outside of the US who wants to buy fabric clothing so for the meantime if you don't want to miss out on any of these pieces because I wouldn't then just reach out to them by email directly since we started with a Chanel bag we'll just continue with all the Chanel bags get it out of the way extra mini cocoa handle that one is no surprise because I've been talking about that one being on the chopping block for a while I have a love-hate relationship with cocoa handles I think I just love the idea of owning one I know currently they have the SLG version the one that's super tiny with one compartment I'm telling you, it gets me every time. Maybe it's the shape. There's so many things that I don't like about it. One being the most fussy cocoa handle I've ever owned. It's so hard to get in and out of it. Plus, I really didn't do a good job at choosing the color. I went with this green color, which is a gorgeous green. It's a very neutral green, except that me, I don't do green. I mean, I almost don't even do blue, even though blue looks better on me than green. Definitely lost money on that one. I just consigned it with Luxe Du Jour. By the time I consigned this bag, the economy was doing so bad that I definitely lost a lot of money, about 1500 If anybody were to ask my opinion today, I would say, you know, get what you love, obviously. But if you want my opinion, I'm going to say that it's not worth it because just try just try to get the regular rectangle mini because things will fit so much easier especially when you go such small size i think the old mini size or the old small size i don't know what you call it now the old mini or the current mini size is okay uh, when you go all the way to extra mini and then the slg size now it's just too small and because it's a lot of material a lot of like pleating as compartments they're just not smart compartments so i would i would actually say please try not to get it if you can chanel gabrielle yes i already let go of my burgundy one last year but this year i also let go of the black one and i had a good run with the gabrielle i would say the gabrielle is still a bag that i really admire uh, from afar i've seen it in the wild <laughs> the other day i was shopping around and this girl was wearing the um small size or the size that i own but she she had the one with the handle I still think that if you love the bag get it uh or keep it <laughs> uh for me it was sort of you know i had my run it was great and i don't regret 
a single thing. I'm just glad that I had the experience with it. So yeah, it's a solid bag. I just think that I had to make space in my collection from having too many black bags to having too many bags to rotate to having too many similar function bags because they're all ultimately very similar size. And when it comes to me picking things to put on a chopping block, that just it just so happened that it was the turn. There's no other way to sugarcoat it otherwise, which I'm not trying to do. It's just, yeah, I, I let it go. The next Chanel bag that I let go, and there's two more, is the bucket bag. So I think the name of that bag is called the rolled up bucket bag. It was one of those seasonal bags that was really, really well thought out. There was a top handle, there was a shoulder and crossbody strap. There's four feet on it. So it's a really, really well-made bag for a seasonal bag and it was really popular i think a lot of people were trying to get it after the fact uh which i did too because i had to buy mine from a reseller at the time and i paid a premium for it in hindsight especially at the prices these days that bag is considered pretty cheap even with the premiums the reason why i let it go however is that i kind of have yeah, a very similar bag function-wise because I do have the Hermes Picotin. They're both bucket bags. Do I need so many bucket bags? They're both black color. They're both really nice. They're both so nice in their own way. I just had to pick and choose. It went to a very lovely subby who has been after this bag for a long time. Happy ending, went to a really great home, so it worked out. <laughs> I don't know if that one's gonna shock you more or the hard bag. <laughs> Take a guess which one it is. It's the caviar top handle mini. They did caviar in that one season and then they never did it ever again. So the caviar version of the top handle is extra special. I tried to find it, couldn't find it until one day my good friend here on YouTube, fashion junkie, hi babe if you're watching. I don't know if you ever would watch this. She was trying to rehome hers and I bought it from her. So in a way, it worked out for both of us. I had a great run with the bag. I honestly blame it on Hermes. Hermes journey is no joke. It's, ah, uh, let's not get into it because it's, Hermes is too crazy. And yet we do it, it's fine. <laughs> a fashion junkie bought it from Lux du Jour, then she sold it to me and now I rehomed it back. I consigned it back to Lux du Jour. A full circle moment. Do I miss it? Um. Yes and no. I think I just love the idea of just owning every single style out there. But at the end of the day, do I really, really need it in my collection? I think I have so many kind of like this kind of size bag, right? The mini size. Another reason, which is pretty much the main reason, the differentiator between that letting that one go and my actual mini flaps. I still own my rectangular and my square minis both in caviar. Those are just like the classic ones. Common denominator for those versus that one is that I was the first owner of those ones and I'm someone who is less attached to secondhand pieces. I don't know why, it's just something that I've definitely noticed ever since, you know, collecting bags. I am not attached the same way I am to bags that I've owned first, like that I bought myself from the store versus those that I buy pre-loved. For some reason, I have a much easier time letting go of pre-loved pieces. Even though they're, they could be so iconic, so hard to get, that made the decision a little bit easier. Anyway, as far as bags, that's five Chanel bags that I did let go in the past, um, you know, kind of 12 months period. In the grand scheme of Hermes and Hermes pre-spend and Hermes pricing, it's really not that much. It's only helping a little bit, so <laughs> we'll have to keep going. So you might be wondering, did I let go of any Hermes by any chance? I used to think that I, I would never let go of Hermes because Hermes is another beast. Because you had to work so hard at it, you would be less likely to let anything go which is how I felt for so long, which is why I haven't let go of anything up until now. So I did let go of two items from Hermes. One bag that I did let go is the Della Cavalleria. I don't know if many of you might have seen that coming or maybe not, I don't know. But ever since I got my Constance very recently, I decided that I didn't need both 
very similar style. They're both crossbody. At the time, I even told myself I knew that the Della was kind of like a placeholder for a Constance because I definitely knew I wanted a Constance. I was interested in the Della because there was no other way to try it other than to buy it. So I bought it and, you know, it was good that I tried it. I didn't love it in a sense that I do find the Della a little bit too masculine. Maybe masculine is not the right way of saying it. It's a little bit less elegant than I would have liked. I definitely prefer the elegance and kind of like the feminine aspect of the Constance. It's just more petite, close to the body. I also love the double strap, which the Della couldn't give me. It also had a thicker strap, which on me, it looked a bit clunky. But if you were to ask me whether you should get the Lella or not, I would still recommend it because everything I said in my original review is still true. It's really easy to get in and out of it. I've had an experience wearing the Della where someone completely opened the door, flung it open on me, and I thought it damaged the bag and nothing happened to it. Literally, the Della was such a workhorse. So I really think the Della is so well made. But do I recommend it over the Constance, especially if you're like me, your style is like me, your stature is like me? Um, no. Speaking of Constance, the next item that I let go from Hermes is the Constance to go. Did I really need both the Constance and the Mini Kelly because they're both quite small bags. They're both really limiting. Um, so when it came to choosing one, I I had to keep the Mini Kelly, obviously. It made it easier that the Constance was black because again, I have so many black bags that I'm like, okay, this is, this is, this is very excessive, okay? A plus, I added the Mini Bolide, which is also black. It just so happened, I know. So you see where I'm going, right? Mini Bolide, Mini Kelly, they're all the same size. The Constance to Go is a fantastic travel wallet. Um, it's one of those bag wallet or wallet bag that can be quite versatile. You can use it as a nighttime clutch. It looks really good, but I had to cut it somewhere. So yeah, Constance had to go. So the remaining three items are all from Louis Vuitton. LV. I've been back and forth, back and forth with the Nano Speedy. I knew it was going to be next on the chopping block when it came to it, but I didn't let it go immediately because it was relatively inexpensive compared to everything else that would be able to make a dent. Generally speaking, because I let go of these things at different times of the year, some are definitely more popular, more coveted. Maybe I let it go earlier. Some I let it go more recently. So I definitely lost money here and there, but I also gained money in certain items. So I would say generally speaking, I kind of broke even. It's hard to say because if we went into ready to wear and all those things, that definitely lost money. But generally speaking with the bags, because some made profit, some made a loss, they kind of overall canceled each other out. So yeah, with the Nano Speedy, definitely lost money on that one. With the next item from LV, which I can't even say that it's a bag, it's the Mini Pochette. I've owned it for a while. I kind of used it here and there, but I was never really like a um, pouch person, you could say. Like I don't really need so many SLGs. I don't buy many SLGs. It's possible that I didn't even use it in the past like four, five years. I feel like it's been that long, so I just thought maybe it's time to just let go while I'm already sending all these things to the consignment store. I'm just gonna throw it all in and then just kind of ship it all out, and which is why I sold it. Uh, that one definitely made money. It made $230. <laughs> this will shock some people, I'm sure especially you LV lovers out there. I finally let go of my classic Neverfull. I sold it to a lovely subscriber who reached out. It's one of those things that I never really was planning to sell it. I just thought if someone really wanted it, I wouldn't be opposed to it because I was not really using it. I, it's just such a big open tote. I sold it to her as a bundle with other things and she loves it. She actually loves it. She loves my Neverflow. She couldn't believe how good of a condition it is. 
because trust me, the structure and the patina on mine is really fantastic. And I'm just glad that it went to a lovely subscriber. And yeah, those are 10 bags. Yeah, 10 bags I sold in the past year that I had my run. They ha I had my run with them. Uh, some of them I do miss a little bit more than others, but it's all good because if old things don't go, <laughs> new things don't come, right? That's how it is. I am really, really now just all about Chanel and Almez, which I've always said I'm very brand loyal. I've just honed into my favorite brands and the rest is history. Those are the items that made the biggest dent in terms of, you know, getting back money to pay for things because they're expensive. They're more expensive things, right? Uh, but I did also sell uh, quite a few other items that more like the accessories. So definitely a lot of jewelry, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. It looks like there's 12 Chanel costume jewelry that I let go. I'll touch on this, the pieces that definitely are standout pieces, such as the big CC Chanel button earrings. It was one of those such iconic earrings that, you know, everyone wants to get their hands on. And one of my lovely subscribers was able to connect me with her essay and I was able to get it uh, actually of all places, all the way from Selfridges, but those earrings were really, really heavy. And not only that, they also had a really fat stem. Basically any earrings that had a really fat pose or the graduated pose, uh, it's just, <laughs> my ears would end up bleeding at the end of like a full day wear, which is the reason why, although I kept them for such a long time, but I kept them only because of how iconic they were and because it was so hard to get them. But at the end of the day, they were just so uncomfortable. So yeah, I ultimately let it go eventually. Another pair that I did let go are the big chunky chain CCs. Those ones I actually had them sent from my at least essay at the time from Las Vegas. I paid for them, she transferred it to the Seattle store, then I picked it up in Seattle, which it's, that's a long journey in itself just to get those earrings. They definitely were a statement because of how huge they were. And uh, I don't know, somehow I think I also moved on from such chunky pieces. They were really loud and I think they're fine. I could have kept them, definitely. There's nothing wrong with those pairs. Uh, the stem was fine, um, but they were really extra. <laughs> and then the other pair, which were the Chanel. Oh my gosh, those ones. I had such a hard time finding them. I actually tried them the first time in Hawaii. I could have bought them right there and then, but I didn't because I thought I would try to find the clip-ons because I thought the post, because it was the thick post, I was like, ah, oh, I'll try to find the clip-ons. Of course, I found the clip-ons and then the clip-ons were uncomfortable. So in the end, I still bought them back in the post version. Definitely belong more to the runway more than my collection. <laughs> Those ones definitely be careful if you own them. Actually, any costume jewelry, be careful because they can tarnish. You always have to have an eye on them, always wipe them clean after each use. Um, because it's at the end of the day, it's their costume, which is re which is also the reason why I let go of so much costume jewelry. I kept some, but I let go of so much because I was just so tired of looking after all of them. And I just didn't want to see another stone fall out or another tarnishing happening. It just, I was just over it. For most of my costume jewelry, not all, but most of them, the majority of them, I just sent it to Fashion File because at the time, Fashion File was still quoting me reasonable amounts. Like some, they would quote way more and some they would quote a little under the retail price, which, you know, you kind of make up for it, the difference. So in the end, it worked out. Um, other than that, there's, you know, pieces here and there that I'm just like, you know, kind of just decided to get rid of because like I said, I kept still some pieces, my favorite, favorite costume pieces, but I would say like the majority of my costume jewelry is pretty much gone. I now mainly focus on fine jewelry. I would even go as far to say that I'd rather have sterling silver than 
than costume jewelry because at least with Soyoung Silver, you can still clean it. Two other Chanel accessories that I let go, which are not costume jewelry, are actually belts. One of them is actually the 19B collection, thin belt. By the way, I have nothing against Chanel belts. I still love them. I still own my Chanel belt. So this is one of them that I still own. I still own the big CC. Uh, elastic one and they are lovely. The reason why I let go of that other one is because unfortunately it was a size, well two sizes too big to be honest because it was a size 80. Another Chanel belt that I did let go which is the Chanel vintage belt that I found on eBay so many years ago. A lot of people are into the vintage stuff now which I was never one of those people. I think the vintage belt, they're so chunky and heavy because it's 24 karat gold and they use like really heavy metal. So it felt really substantial, but personally speaking, it was too loud for me. It was so clunky, very heavy. I almost felt like every time I wore it on my waist, it weighed me down. <laughs> it was just taking up space in my wardrobe. Fine jewelry. So there's not really a lot of fine jewelry that I sold. There's only one piece really, and it's the JUC ring. I don't know if you guys remember when I bought this love bracelet. I also bought the Juste and Clou slim ring. And at the time, it was the perfect ring for my inflamed fingers. At the time, my lupus was very, very like... I don't know, it flared up a lot. So I often got really, really swollen fingers. And that ring was perfect because it was one of those rings that, you know, you had to go through the nail to go through your knuckle. And then it was still quite spacious inside. So it was perfect for me while I had my condition pretty active back then. I've learned to manage it so much better. So I felt like in the past years, my swelling has happen less frequently it still happens but it happens less intensely that that ring no longer fit so a lovely subscriber from the u.s bought it from me and the, that was it um it was the only piece of fine jewelry that i sell all in all do i regret any purchases i think they all went for a good cause but i will be honest however if money was no object, space was no object, and I didn't care if it was fussy or not, just a collector's item, just damn it, keep it type of thing. One thing I would have kept in that case, the Chanel heart bag. I loved it more for the looks. It was such a fussy bag though. It's truly not really fun to use. So I don't regret it. But if I could keep one bag or one item out of this whole list, that I truly felt like, you know what? Who cares about all those things? Just keep it. It would have been the heart bag. But I honestly don't regret any of the choices that I made. I feel way more relieved now having let go of some of these things uh, than not. And honestly, I could, I could make more space. It's never really an easy decision for me. Like if I decided to let one thing go, I've already thought about it for so long. Let me know in the comments if you've also been downsizing or maybe you're the opposite. You tend to keep everything, which is great. I admire those people. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it was informative in one way or another and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye.